Sunday after Pentecost. Our announcements today are a sad one. We have lost our sister in Christ, Eleanor Lambert. She was very active in our church for many years and at the age of 93 has passed on to be with the Lord. Welcome and concerning this day. Today the prophet Amos calls for justice to roll down like waters. Paul urges us, urges us to encourage one another with the promised coming of the Lord. Jesus tells the parable of the wise and foolish bridesmaids. Surrounded by the faithful of every time and place, we celebrate Christ's coming in our midst in the word of life and the feast of victory, the marriage feast of the Lamb. Our opening hymn will be number 358.
And Almighty God, forgive us our sins and strengthen our resolve and bring us to life eternal. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others <clears throat> through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our lesson from today is from First Theologians. Some of the theologians are worried that dead Christians will be eluded from the resurrection to eternal life when Christ comes again. Paul reassures them with a word of hope that all Christians, living or dead, will be raised into an everlasting life with Christ. A reading from the First Theologians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Christ died and rose again, even so, through Christ, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is taken from Psalm 70. You are my helper and my deliverer, O Lord. Do not tarry. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. And let those who seek my life be ashamed and have altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, Ah, and gloat over me turn back because they are ashamed. Let those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not care. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, 
For you know not, you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ saying, let your lamps be burning, let your light be burning at all times. 
No one knows the day or the hour when the world as we know it will come to an end. But we can be assured that for us as individual Christians, it will end at some time not too long from now. It's interesting that there were certain sects that were founded upon the idea of predicting the end of the world, especially the, in the uh, uh, 19th century. In fact, whole denominations have run around the idea of predicting the end. But we shouldn't worry about that so much, should we? I mean, God alone knows, as the scripture says. We shouldn't worry about how the world will end, but how we will end in this world. Be prepared. Be always ready. It comes often very suddenly. And here at St. Paul's, we were reminded of that fact very powerfully about a month ago when our organist, Jerry Perry, was called forth in this life quite suddenly and unexpectedly. So, again, we know that Christ is beyond what we see in this world, beyond the grave. And we'll meet him there in ways beyond human understanding, ways that I has not seen or ear heard. But we shouldn't be, be focused on that totally. We need Christ here in this world too, don't we? We need Christ in this world, in other people, especially people in need. What does it mean when we pray every day, thy kingdom come, thy will be done? We put ourselves at Christ's disposal to work for the coming of his kingdom and the doing of his will. I always think of this St. Martin legend. I've mentioned it many times in the past, and most of you know about it. St. Martin was uh, a Roman soldier, and he, uh, by legend, was going down a road one night, very dark, very cold, and he met a beggar there, practically naked, shivering in the cold, uh, in the last extremes of his life. And St. Martin took his cloak off and cut the cloak in half and gave one piece to the beggar, the man on the roadside there, and kept one for, for, one for himself. And then later on, he rode down the road a bit on his horse, and what happened, but he sees Jesus Christ clothed in that under half of his cloak. Christ is there around us in other people too. We must not forget that. Let your light shine, the Lord says, that people may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Glorify your Father who is in heaven. I know that my faith has been nourished and has grown by being around other Christians, especially Christians I know here at our St. Paul's Church, by their life and example, their giving nature, their compassionate nature, their caring nature. That nourishes me, and I know it nourishes all those around us. But as we carry our land, we have to remember to, to be supplied with oil, the oil of faith, the oil of hope, the oil of love. And we are nourished, our land is filled by our relationship to God in Christ, by the Holy Spirit's coming into our lives and filling our lives with those things we must have. We all know we live in a very somber world, uh, a dark time. I mean, there's some wonderful things going on also, but we know things around us are not as God would have them be, and this has been true in every age, I suppose, but sometimes, sometimes we feel a little more acutely than other times. And so in a dark world, let our lamps be full, that we may lead the way to others, to Jesus Christ, for others, to, to Jesus Christ. We may be few in number, as churches were smaller today, but our spirit can be very full, very willing, very anxious to do the Lord's work. 
And this is what we need to remember every time we pray that prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Use me, Lord, for the coming of your kingdom. Use me, Lord, to do your will. As we see Christ in those around us, in joyful anticipation of seeing Christ in his glory at that great heavenly banquet that we hear so much about in the scriptures, where we sit at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the blessed. Now and all. The prayers of the people. Giving thanks for God's blessings, we pray for the church and all who are in need. You are righteous, O God. Lead your church to true repentance so that we reflect your light and truth to the world. Be with all bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You only can give substance, O God. Be with those who lack life's necessities, and in your goodness provide for them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Only you can judge the nations, O God. Rise up leaders with humble hearts, so that your peace spreads across the earth. Be present with our president and Congress, governor and legislature. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Only you can bring healing, O God. Be mindful of all who are in sickness, sorrow, or any other necessity, especially those we now name in our hearts before you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray especially for our St. Paul's faith community, O God. We seek to discern your will for us as we face a future known to you alone. Be our strength, our stay, and our guide. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal One, grant us at night to know the full measure of life everlasting with you. We remember those who have gone before us with a sign of faith, especially those most dear to us, whom we now name in our hearts. May light perpetual shine upon them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Our nation and the world continues to suffer from the plague of coronavirus. Comfort and uphold all who suffer from this pestilence. Strengthen those who minister to them and guide and direct doctors and scientists so that, by your grace and inspiration, therapies may soon be available and the human race therefore be given another sign of your love for us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, faithful God, we place ourselves and our prayers, spoken and unspoken, Trust in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Together, accept these gifts of our love, O Lord. We can give them willingly, cheerfully, thankfully, knowing all we have has come from you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. 
It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto you, O Lord God, for your great goodness to us and for the hope of eternal life. Therefore, we praise your name and join our archangels and angels and joining in their unending hymn, saying together, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the heights. We give you thanks, O Father, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation in the covenant of Israel, in the words of the prophets, and above all in Jesus Christ, your Son, who, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, and gave it, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Recalling now his suffering and death, celebrating his resurrection and ascension, and looking for his coming, looking for his coming again, we ask you, Father, for the power of the Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify this gift of bread, that it may become for us the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, through whom, with whom, and in whom we have life and salvation, and because of whom we can with confidence approach your throne of grace. With this, our sacrifice, of praise, and thanksgiving, saying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Together, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us in eternal life, now and always. Amen. 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 Lord, now let your servant go in peace, your word is fulfilled. My eyes have seen the salvation, which we bear in the sight of every people. A light between you and the nations, and glory to your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. We pray that your mercy would strengthen us through this gift in faith for you and fervent love for one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now that the Lord bless you and keep you May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and keep you his peace, now and forevermore, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Our final hymn is number 293. 